Number four, Steve Richards and Jason Griffiths make up the Ouija Brothers, a fearless ghost hunting duo from the English Midlands. What makes them different from most, aside from their bravery, is that they are more skeptical and often set out to debunk famous haunted locations rather than promote them. With that said, they may have met their match at Shepton Mallet Prison. Built in 1610, Shepton Mallet Prison is the oldest prison in the country and also was the longest running until its closure in 2013. Four centuries of brutal treatment have since created hostile spirits who were, for the most part, already not good people people to begin with. So much horror has happened here that a strange feeling of negative energy is said to have washed over the very walls themselves and it isn't long before the Ouija brothers, despite their usual level-headedness, find themselves looking over their shoulder and questioning every sound. Sure, any building that's centuries old is bound to make some really creepy noises, and some of what they record just sounds like the foundation setting and stuff like that. But other encounters, like what happens here only two minutes into their investigation, seems to be in response to a very specific question. Are you upstairs? I agree with them that it's coming from somewhere above, but let me know if you do too. Whatever's following them, it seems to prefer to have a height advantage at all times. But check this part out at 8 minutes and 25 seconds. Jason actually looks up a split second before he hears the noise. So did they plan this and he messed up? Or did he sense it moments prior? Is that you? Uh, he was up above, wasn't he? Confident they found a particularly haunted prison wing to explore, the Ouija brothers walk past each cell, encouraging anything inside to come forth, and they gently coax the spirit into revealing itself. Stee is too busy looking straight ahead and misses the light anomaly appear against the wall right next to him. I fully admit that it could be their camera equipment, but it never happens again a single time. And get this, the light appears at the exact same moment. Jason wanted to know if the spirit remembers what life was like at Shepton Mallet Prison. If you wish to come out, knock on the door that you want to come out of. Do you remember? Neither of them see this though, and so unaware that it's already worked, Jason continues to talk to the spirit about how the prison guards were able to go home. Well, they had to stay here, and out comes the loudest bang of all. Was that? But that's not all they hear. They get out the electromagnetic meter to try and measure air currents for paranormal activity. Nothing happens at first, but then it beeps loudly and turns green for a long time. They can't get the meter to do it again and are trying to figure out if this was a glitch when they are interrupted by something scary mid-sentence. I'll enhance the audio to make it easier to hear. It's the same very volume, didn't it? It's a small, muffled voice from far away, so tiny and distant that it shouldn't have even registered on camera, not with that heavy door closed behind them. And yet it reaches their ears with alarming clarity. They agree it's a woman, but still they are unable to pinpoint its exact location. And when they go outside, the prison is as empty as ever. According to legend, this could be the voice of one of the oldest prisoners, a woman known only as the Woman in White. She is said to have taken the life of her fiancé and passed away in six 1680 from regret. Now she wanders the A and B wings moaning her sorrows, and as they are searching for her, the electromagnetic reader they left behind goes crazy once again, indicating that while they may have left the room, perhaps she is not, and the reason why they were able to hear her so clearly was because her ghostly presence had been standing not in another room, but behind them all along. Number 3. Connor Biddle and India Hopwood are a ghost hunting team who travel to different haunted locations in search of paranormal encounters, which coincidentally is the name of their channel on YouTube. Born in Indiana, Connor released a full-length paranormal documentary in 2012 and has never stopped investigating. His partner, India, moved to South Carolina from England and has been visiting haunted locations since she was 10 and began heading investigations as a teenager. They have nearly two decades of combined experience dealing with the afterlife between them and a lot of interesting evidence to share. This time they find themselves in Withville, Virginia to explore the infamous Octagon Mansion. I am in the Octagon Mansion alone. 
The only thing I can see is what's on this night vision camera. Built in 1870, the Octagon Mansion, or the Roundhouse as some call it, has a relatively unexplained haunted history. Many families lived here over its 100 plus year history, and it was also a few different businesses for a while, none of which lasted for some reason. The town itself once experienced a viral outbreak that took over 100 lives, and this may have tainted with Phil with many restless spirits. With that said, it should come as no surprise that a little host girl is said to be on the second floor, especially considering the outbreak targeted kids. As Connor is exploring the first floor, his camera goes out of focus a second before he senses something nearby. There's nothing to make it go out of focus, and yet the background changes as if someone is standing right in front of him. Is there anybody here? And it stays blurry like this for 11 full seconds before snapping back into focus for no reason at all. And this noise happens a few seconds after coming into focus, almost like an invisible left the shot and went into a different room. The soft knocking is repeated again when he leaves a doll out for the girl to play with and pay attention to the exact location of the doll because that's going to matter in just a second. But for now, it sounds like the girl might be coming downstairs to give the toy a closer look. So the doll is positioned in front of the furthest right window here at 2 minutes and 27 seconds, but at 4 minutes and 45 seconds, it's now by the far left window with its arms raised to its mouth like it's afraid. Now Connor says he isn't sure if the doll moved, or if it was just the camera angle. I think it definitely moved, but the fact that he doesn't rush to take credit makes me respect his work that much more. On a different night, Connor and India think they record a spirit named Nina. Does this sound like a person or electronic interference? I respect that India is able to keep composure. My reaction was more like Connor's. She must have really seen a lot as a ghost hunter for this not to bother her. Anyway, this sounds like a scream of pure agony in my opinion. There's not any hatred in the voice, just pain. Perhaps a final scream from the girl upstairs. And if you didn't think the last sound was human, this one definitely is a woman's cry. India is able to translate quite easily. I believe it really does say hey here like she says. Hey, it's not hey again. And the reason I believe it is because the ghost says hey again. <laughs> As for physical sightings, this is the best piece of evidence Connor has to offer. It's all real. Every bit of it. This 2012 video, taken in Bourbon, Indiana, in the attic of an old pizza place that used to be an apartment building, highlights a strange anomaly hovering against the wall. It doesn't look like the beam of a flashlight because, aside from not being round, there's no ray of light connecting it to a source. And when the white outline moves off the wall, it does not change size or shape like a flashlight would, instead staying completely the same as it traverses the darkness. Number 2. Over a year ago, I briefly touched on the saga of Joseph Chance Sloan, a YouTuber who for years was haunted by a spirit from 2011 to 2014, but I didn't get to cover his whole story. Three more videos in particular are worth getting into. But first, I did some more research and discovered a blog with years worth of updates. Joseph first noticed an apparition within weeks of letting his girlfriend move into his apartment, so I suspect she may have brought something that had attached itself to her. Soon each of them felt constantly watched, especially in the shower of all places, and it got to the point where they both thought they were getting pranked by each other. But one day, as Joseph was taking a shower, he heard his girlfriend friend come into the bathroom. The topic was already on his mind, so he explained to her that he thought the apartment was haunted. But then the figure on the other side, the one who he thought was his girlfriend, disappeared mid-explanation. From that point on, Joseph began setting up his sole camera in different places to document the spirit, and that's when things ramped up to the next level. On April 16th, 2012, Joseph announces out loud to whatever's listening that he's turning in for the night. 
So we're just going to film this area. I had, like I said, my lighting issues were horrible, so I'm leaving some lights on this time. So if there is anything, hopefully we'll catch it. Anyways, guys, have a good night. See you in the morning. Orb activity begins at 2 minutes and 12 seconds, carries on for about 6 seconds, and then abruptly stops. The kitchen is eerily quiet for over 40 seconds, and then the stovetop burner turns on to its highest setting. This happens out of nowhere at the 3 minutes and 17 seconds mark. But at 3 minutes and 14 seconds, an orb shows up in front of the oven just 3 seconds before it turns on. Could this be the ghost in question caught on camera? Joseph was asleep so this event could have burned the whole place down if anything was still on the burner, which is maybe what this ghost was trying to do all along. A full seven months later, on November 28th of that same year, Joseph puts the camera up on a high ledge to show as much of his living room as possible, floor to ceiling. He again announces that he's going to bed and turns out the lights. It's 11.46 p.m. Anyways, uh, we'll see what we get and if we'll get anything. So, uh, I'll see you all in the morning and, uh... Everything looks normal for roughly two minutes until a shadowy movement materializes over by the entertainment center. It's hard to notice even when circled, but when you do see it, it looks way out of place. I don't think it's camera pixelation because none of the other darker areas of the room are moving like this. And at approximately two minutes, a large lonesome orb floats upwards from that part of the room and disappears. Exactly 10 minutes later, at 2 minutes and 12 seconds, this speaker falls over and lands not too far from where the orb originated from. Obviously, no one is around to knock it over. So if this is fake, how was it done? On October 1st, 2013, Joseph made his final YouTube video, letting everyone know he has moved to a new apartment. He thinks that changing his location has stopped the spirit, but considering it may have attached itself to his girlfriend when she first moved in, I'm not so sure it worked. This part at 4 minutes and 30 seconds further proves my point. It could be his camera making a squeaking noise while being adjusted, but it sounds a lot like the laughter of a small child. But, anyways, let's see if I can do it like this. There we go. And when you compare it to his normal laugh, it's definitely not the same voice. <laughs> And that's pretty much the last anyone's ever heard from him. The last update comes from his blog on July 25th, 2014, promising more videos that sadly never came. I don't know what happened to him. No one does. But suddenly dropping off at the height of your fame is not reassuring to say the least and makes me wonder if something terrible happened. I've got a challenge for you. Since you've made it this far, why not like this video and hit subscribe in the next five seconds? Because I upload four new scary videos every week. If you're curious about what I look like in real life, then go to my Instagram at DylanIsChillinYT and tap that follow button to find out. Number 1. Vadim Vadimich is a Russian YouTuber who often explores the radioactive remains of Chernobyl, an abandoned power plant that went into meltdown during the 1980s. On this journey, he and his friends find an abandoned daycare center that seems quite haunted. One of the first things they find are two dolls. One is headless and the other has poked in eyes, shaded black all around as if someone was pressing down aggressively hard as they scribbled. It's not a welcoming sign, but could just be the work of some edgy teens, or maybe even someone in their own group, so they press on. Across from the dolls is this picture of a Russian team all huddled around a strange object in the center. I don't know what this is in the middle, so someone help me out because it might be a clue. I assume this was a picture of the kids who used to come here before the meltdown. Who knows how many, if any, actually made it to adulthood due to the radioactive exposure. Immediately behind the photo is a creepy old picture of a Russian woman in full uniform crying. I don't understand the significance of this picture, but I feel like they are saying something important here. So translate this part from Russian to English if you can. 
After a while, it becomes apparent that they are all being watched. These white eyes first appear on the other side of a window at 2 minutes and 15 seconds. I thought it was just his light, until I realized the light is hitting his chest and shouldn't be visible behind him at all. And here at 3 minutes and 52 seconds, the eyes appear again in a doorway, much closer. It's just for a split second, but I mean, whose flashlight looks like that? Nobody's that I know. Those look like eyes for sure. Glowing ones at that. They come come across a portion of building they've explored before, but this time the door is partially opened, so they cautiously step inside. The first thing I noticed were these floating eyes at 7 minutes and 56 seconds. They look exactly the same size and shape as the ones before, but what they saw was the top of someone's head. Someone incredibly tall and standing totally still. Standing motionless is a figure with a blacked out face and long white garbs. They run away and soon encounter it again. Its white clothes somewhat resemble the doll clothes we saw earlier. Could that have been a warning? When it gets close to them, it seems shorter than before, but impossibly broad-shouldered and powerful looking. I don't know why they let it get this close, but I guess they were frozen in place from fear and tired from running. I hope this was just a mannequin or something, but when it does this, I know it's far from a prop. <laughs> The group retreats back inside, and now Cornered eventually resorts to smashing through a window and takes a risk climbing through broken glass just to get away from whatever they just saw. So I think it's real.